Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Your Mark on the World show. I'm your host, Devin Thorpe. I'm a contributor for Forbes covering social entrepreneurship and impact investing. And for today's show, we're very excited to have with us Sherry Arison, who is the author of The Doing Good Model. Sherry, thank you very much for joining us again. Thank you for having me. Well, it, it is wonderful to uh, have you back and we're excited to learn more about your new book. Uh, your, your last book was uh, a bestseller and we're excited uh, for the success you've had there and are eager to hear your insights. Uh, it, it's clear that you have a genuine passion for actually seeing and doing good and, and that appears to run from the smallest uh, level, the personal level of doing good, uh, and being kind all the way up to, to global good and uh, very exciting to have you back on the show. Thank so you. you're, who is the audience uh, for your new book? Well, really anybody, but uh, the main goal is business leaders. And when I say business leaders, it can be any field, uh, small businesses, large businesses. Uh, the doing good model is activate your goodness in business. And I really believe that uh, business leaders can have a huge impact on, uh, on our society as a whole. Well, clearly you embody that. Now, your book features 13 values or principles that you espouse for business leaders. And I, I want to talk about a few of those. The, okay. the one that really caught my attention, that really stood out as being a, a unique Sherry Arison insight. Uh, was uh, purity. T talk to us a little bit about the, the value of purity in the doing good model. Um, well, purity, we, we define it really on many different levels. It's purity of thought, it's, it's puri purity of our intention, and it's purity of our actions. So really, you know, different people can use purity, the value of purity, on many different levels. It can be as simple as, as how we're thinking, how we, how we talk to ourselves, actually, and how we negotiate a business contract. I mean, it, it can be in so many different circles. And what's interesting about the values and especially the value of purity is when people start to think about it and discuss it, it already, it already changes their mindset and it already changes the way that they do business. That is uh, really a really powerful insight, isn't it? To think about how, how that uh, clarity and purity of thought uh, can change what we do and how we do it. Uh, your book also features a discussion of volunteering. And, and as I think about uh, your audience, business leaders, I, I'm trying to understand how volunteering impacts business. Talk a little bit about that if you will. Well, I think first of all, it's really important for employees to feel connected to, to a higher vision and to a higher purpose. And when they give of themselves and give of their time, um, freely according to their own heart's desire, not just because the company wants them to go out and volunteer, but have a discussion around volunteering so that you have the corporate vision of volunteering and then you have the individual employee on what they want to do. And this has worked really well with Good Deeds Day. Good Deeds Day has already grown nine years. Uh, this last ninth, ninth year was 61 countries, a million people going out and giving three million hours of volunteering. So it's grown by leaps and bounds and next year 2016 it's on April 10th and really we call to action for the business world to go out and give of themselves to to benefit others one of the things that I'm curious about and this is as good a time as any to ask you is is whether you observe that business leaders and businesses are able to increase their profits by focusing on doing good is that something you're able to see? Uh, that's something I'm able to prove. Um, we, over the years, you know, with the vision of doing good and with implementing the values, we've taken the values from a, you know, plaque on the wall level to the level of 
practical tools for implementation by engaging people and really having them connect to the values and implement them in all circles of our business world and our individual life. And what we've seen is that the profits are growing. Um, I've said from the very beginning that when you have an infrastructure company and you build sustainable, you're going to make more money in the end. Or if you have a bank like we do that teaches people um, to, to prosper and grow, giving them tools and education so they make the right choices, in the end, those profits come to, to us as returns. Um, it's very hard in the beginning for businesses to understand this. They always want to look at the bottom line. But I believe that when you go with your values, you profit on all levels, on financial level, but also on a social level and an and um, environmental level as well. That is a, that is a powerful, powerful uh, insight. I mean, to, to think about the fact that you're confident you can prove that doing good improves profitability. Boy, that message, that message is, is just vital. And, you know, think about the, the good that we can unleash in the world when corporations around the world really buy into your model. That, that's exciting. That's powerful. Well, the book, by the way, the book has, you know, practical um, examples, both from our group, the Arison group, both in business and philanthropy on how we implement the values and profit from it as well. But we also have examples from other fields and other businesses outside the Arison group. Uh, that's fantastic. Now, now, Sherry, give us uh, one more of the values or insights from your book that you'd like to explain? Uh, well, like you said, there's 13 values and I'm passionate about all of them. Uh, but I'll give you an example from language and communication. Um, I really believe that language can either build us up or build us down, destroy us. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of uh, power in our language. Um, we manifest what we think about and what we speak about. Um, so I've introduced language co and communication to the different management teams and employees. And the employees themselves came back with an idea called Positive It. And what they do is take the language and turn it from negative to positive and find solutions so that in a company, you know, when you come up with an idea and, and the employees or the management team says, no, that can't be done, we right away turn that around and say, how can this be done? How can we solve this? Um, how can we make it happen? So it's taking the language and always putting it on the positive. Yeah, that, that really does create a, a mental shift. It, it's certainly been my experience that developing little habits like that make a big difference. And to think about uh, institutionalizing that in a business so that everyone's on the, on the same page, uh, using that positive language would be really uh, a, a, a powerful thing for an organization to, to make real change, wouldn't it? It's very powerful. And what I found by engaging the employees and having the employees as part of implementation for these values, it's, uh, it's uh, increased creativity, it's opened up discussion, and it's been a win-win for everyone. Yeah. Now, Sherry, you are a role model to millions of people. I mean, you, you really are a, a hero to many. Thank but, you. But uh, at the same time, I, I, I've got to think that you look up to, uh, admire, and, and follow uh, perhaps uh, other people. Who, are, who do you look to uh, principally as a role model for you? Well, for me, there's always been uh, three people that, that come to my mind, um, Martin Luther King, Gandhi, and Mother Teresa, um, people who have created change in a big way, people who are care, caring and compassionate, and have created a huge movement in a, in a peaceful way as well. Uh, th th those are such great role models, oh my heavens, uh, and certainly I see you walking in their footsteps. Thank you. Now you, you're in an interesting position uh, as one of the world's richest people, quite frankly. You have uh, all the options that anyone might possibly conceive of to do with her time, influence, and money. 
and you are focused on doing good. Tell us a little bit about why you're so passionate about good. Well, my feeling is that we have one humanity. We're all interconnected. Uh, we're all part of the whole. We have one planet. Um, and I have always cared about the future of humanity and the future of our planet. And my true inner belief is that if we want to see a positive change in the world, we each need to take responsibility, each one in their own way, each one in their own circles. Um, and I decided to take responsibility in whatever that I can do to make this happen. And I believe that in order to create positive change, you need to put the light on the positive, on the goodness, and spread that goodness. Boy, that, that is... Uh... A, a wonderful observation that, you know, putting light on, on goodness. And, and I guess uh, we share that. I hate to, I hate to uh, put myself in your boat, but, but I certainly share that passion, that desire to put light on good. And that's, that's why you're on the show today. Thanks. So uh, lastly, uh, I realize your whole book uh, and, and everything you're about is, is uh, about teaching people to do good. But that, that in fact, our audience, uh, and we have all kinds of people, uh, social entrepreneurs, impact investors, philanthropists, uh, nonprofit leaders, people from all walks of life are, are watching the show, but they're watching with one common interest, and that is how to do more good. I, I wonder if you would give us one last tip from your book or elsewhere uh, on how you have learned to do more good in the world? Well, I truly believe that everything that we do in our lives starts with a connection to our inner self. Um, and I think that when an individual connects to their own inner self, their essence, their true essence and their true purpose and connect to their passion, um, that's the best way to go about it. That's why I really can't tell anyone else what they should do. I can give examples, lots of examples for myself, from my own life, from my businesses, from my philanthropy, and, and the book gives that. But everyone needs to connect to their own inner higher self. Boy, that, that is so true, isn't it? Uh, that's what really gives us fulfillment in life is to find that uh, connection to our inner purpose, not, not the purpose we're assigned by anyone else, but that inner desire to do something to, and, and when we connect with that, uh, we, we're, we're powerful. That's right. right. That's right. And that's one of the values as well. Fulfillment. Oh, oh that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, well, Sherry, before you go, please tell us how to get your book. Where, where, where can we find it? Well, uh, the bookstores, Barnes and Nobles or Amazon, or you can go to the doing good model .com. Fantastic. Well, Sherry, again, thank you very much for being with us. We're so glad to have you, honored to have you take the time with us today. And we wish you every success with this book. We hope this one thank will you. be a huge bestseller. Thank you very much. Thank All you. All righty. Let's bye do bye. some good. Okay. Bye. Bye.